String theory is the result of scientists' attempt to come up with a theory of everything by unifying the electromagnetic force and the strong and weak nuclear forces predicted by quantum mechanics with the gravitation force explained by Einstein's theory of relativity. During the late 1960s, experiments colliding atoms at high speed on an atom smasher at Stanford Linear Accelerator Center revealed a bunch of new, unknown subatomic constituents. What scientists found was that subatomic particles were made up of even smaller fundamental particles called quarks. The problem was that point particles could not unify the uncertainty in the very small, described by the quantum mechanics, with the smoothness of the very large, described by the theory of relativity. However, 1968, a young physicist called Gabriel Veneziano came up with a formula describing the strong force binding protons to neutrons in the atomic nucleus. Passed from colleague to colleague, the formula ended up in the hands of another young physicist called Leonard Susskind. Susskind found that behind the explanation of the strong nuclear force, the formula actually seemed to describe a small vibrating string. The discovery have led to that the majority of today's physicists believe that the smallest constituents of the subatomic particles and quark is small, massless, one-dimensional vibrating strings of energy. And depending on the intensity and frequency of the vibration of the string, particles get their unique properties such as mass and charge. So the universe could be seen as a grand symphony composed of an enormous number of strings and depending on the note played on the tiny strings, different building blocks are provided to the fabric of cosmos. However, a problem is that strings need to occupy 11 dimensions to fulfill the manifestation of particles. In other words, in addition to the 3 dimension of space plus the 4th of time, strings need an addition of 7 dimensions to operate in, when it is obvious that there are only 3 spatial dimensions present around us. Or is it? The physicist Theodor Kaluz and Oskar Klein argue that maybe there are additional hidden dimensions that we cannot see because they are so small. Take for example the cable hanging between the two buildings. Far away it's difficult to estimate the shape of the cable. You need to come really close and sense the third spatial dimension to be able to establish the true shape of the cable. The extra dimension could be as small as one plank's length, which would make them impossible to detect for the human eye. Extra dimensions are difficult for us to imagine. However, suppose that the creature called Flatlander living in a two-dimensional world existed. The Flatlander eating Flatlander tomatoes could then only move in two dimensions, but they would be able to see our third dimension in two-dimensional cross-sections, here illustrated by a tomato from our three-dimensional world passing by. If we apply the two-dimensional idea to our world, we see that we can only move in three dimensions, even though we can sense the fourth dimension expressed as time. However, we can only see time as something passing by, but if we were a creature living in four-dimensional space, we, maybe, would be able to travel in time. In the eleventh dimension, strings can combine and stretch into enormous proportions, and even grow as large as a whole universe. Scientists believe that our universe is like a large flat surface with an insignificant thickness called membrane or brain floating around in hyperspace. Scientists see our universe as one of many parallel universes present in the vast hyperspace, and that neighboring universes may not be further away from us than the close to our bodies and other universes can be governed by other physical laws than the laws present in our universe. Scientists believe that we cannot observe the nearby universes because our eyes use photons to see, and that photons are made up of open strings, which cannot leave the membrane barrier of our universe. 
closed rings on the other hand seems to be able to pass in and out through the membrane barrier and into neighboring universes. Scientists think that gravitation is made of open strings and therefore it will dilute itself among the parallel universes, making it appear weaker than the other three familiar forces present in our universe. Take for example the electromagnetic force, here represented by a magnet. It is not difficult for a small magnet to pick up for example a key from the surface of Earth, even though the combined gravitation force of the whole planet is pulling on the key. In the future, scientists hope that by learning how to control closed strings they will be able to contact nearby universes. If we turn our attention back to the two slits experiment, we concluded that a conscious mind governed by other physical laws than the one present in our universe was needed in order to collapse the wave function into a particle. Could it be that our consciousness is present in another parallel universe, governed by other physical laws, and that our very thought is made up of closed strings that could pass back and forth between the two universes? The very idea is breathtaking. However, I will under no circumstances force you into believe that what I have presented here is any way near the final truth regarding a conscious mind. On the contrary, I want you to understand that as long as we humans have populated Earth, we have tried to answer the question about our place in the universe and we will go on doing so by revealing new and far more astonishing discoveries in the future. What I want is for you to give up the idea of a fixed and predetermined world based on Newtonian laws, because scientists have done so a long time ago, and begin to understand that a conscious mind is part of the reality, so for the future, be conscious.